Liverpool, England. Looking out towards the end of the River Mercy to the Irish Sea out there. The city isn't as ancient as uh, many sites in England, but I'm here on the UNESCO World Heritage Site docks where this area right here became one of the biggest shipping ports in the world. But first, let's get to the region, regional history. So, in the Iron Age, many Britain tribes inhabited this area. All of Liverpool was actually a big forest. Um, there was some farms, different communities, you know, hunter-gatherers many thousands of years into the BC, around 1200 BC. These interesting stone monuments that we know the Britons like, right? It's because of Stonehenge. When I say the Britons, it's a connection of all kinds of different tribes, which included Celtics coming in and Druids, stuff like that. Anyway, down this way a little ways, the Calder Stone Monument was discovered. Could be up to 5,000 years old. So let's fast forward a little bit. Not a lot is known about the ancient history. 780, 70 AD, the northward expansion of the Roman Empire came into this area. They were chasing the Druid resistance. And, uh, you know, battling back any resistance to the province of Britannia. They set up the nearby city of Ch now called Chester as their provincial uh, or regional area up here, Roman town. Roman coins and tile works were found at different excavations around the Liverpool city area. So there was, you know, trade going on and people coming through. The city area though, right around here, was never heavily inhabited in ancient history though. Just small farming settlements, like I said. Um, after the Roman retreat around 400 AD, the tribes moved back in and some rival Saxon kingdoms were vying for control of the region. Mercia defeated Northumberland and Celtic tribes at the same time in a battle uh, nearby here, I think a little ways that way. And actually Vikings from Scandinavia began coming into the area. You know, the Vikings love the sea. Real easy access right here. Around 900 AD, the Vikings were expelled from their city, Dublin, Ireland. Dublin, Ireland was actually created by the Vikings when they invaded. It's a little ways that way, about an hour. Dublin, Ireland, a place I've been many long, long time ago. Anyways, it started out as a Viking city. The local Irish tribe there expelled them eventually. And uh, they came to this area region near Chester, the old Roman town. And they connected with another little Viking community that lived over that way in like Chester to create a little mini Viking nation in this region. Uh, not a lot of no is known about that time though, but uh, yeah, Scandinavian connections, you know, all over England, including here. The sea is right here, the river, they probably traveled on their long boats, conquering the local peoples, or you know, they were living under them. So let's fast forward. Normer, Normans conquered England. Built, they built a castle nearby Derby. Uh, 1190 AD is when the city is first put on the map. Called Liverpool in Old English, meaning something like a muddy stream. I can see how this could have been a little muddy area right here with some forest. Nothing like it looks today. 1207, a royal charter was set up to officially settle the city and have a northwest English port that was out of the control of the Earl of Chester. You know, a lot of these Earls and people that only lived in these castles had a lot of control. Ooh, cool birds right there. So really though, King John at the time, they were trying to conquer Ireland right off the coast out there. So Liverpool was originally kind of like a tr troop transport place. It was, uh, built up with a castle. All right, pause, pause. All right, so Liverpool Castle was built in 1235, which they tore down in the 1700s. Ah, oh, why did they do that? That's insane. Anyways, that's long gone. Uh, church 
was built, the first church built in 1257 down there, a little ways that we visited, a lot of, not a lot of that is left. So the town was a small fishing and farming community for the next several centuries. Uh, nearby Chester was a large city at the time in the Middle Ages. Uh, some small trade began happening, 1200s to 1500s though, mostly between here and not far Ireland and up the, uh, also the Isle of Man, the Mercy River and Dee River connection. So that was the beginnings of the trade port town, later becoming the largest port in the world. But still small in these times. Well, let's fast forward now, 1575, trade began picking up, growing the town larger than it's ever been. You know, it was only just a few thousand people. Nothing like it is today. Uh, 1626, a charter was set up to revitalize the area by the royals to uh, expand the port because it started becoming economically viable. 1644, there was an invasion by someone named Prince Rupert on the Rhine. He took over the castle briefly, but was expelled by Parliament forces. The Everton Soccer Club still has Prince Rupert's Tower as their uh, logo. Hmm. Okay, local football club, Everton. So, globalization, empire, and slavery is what turned Liverpool into the city it is today. One of United Kingdom's largest cities. 1648, the first cargo ship to the Americas left from these docks right here. Straight out the river. About a month shot, you're in the Caribbean or maybe uh, Colonial America, Boston or something. Virginia, New York maybe. Uh, ships started sailing out that way to the new areas of the new world that were at British settlers. By 1700, several industries sprang up with trade in the region, like tobacco being brought back from the Americas, sugar uh, factories were around here, bring cotton also, and other regional products. It turned it into the second metropolis after London of uh, England especially after the Caribbean trade network became highly lucrative for goods. But they made a lot of money from goods, but most importantly, what they made money on here was human cargo. A little bit of karma in the city, I would say. This is what, what really grew the city and the economy was a transatlantic slave trade. <clears throat> 1699, this building actually right here is a slave museum dedicated to those uh, times. Liverpool would be nothing what it is today without all the money made in the slave trade. And all these people in Jamaica and the US of African descent are connected to the city to this day, in a way. Not everybody, you know, Portuguese, Spanish, uh, French were also involved in this. 1700 is one that's really started going. Uh, the first ship in 1699 left to Barbados from here, going to West Africa, way down that way, and over to Barbados, and then back to Liverpool to these docks. The Triangular Trade, it was called. Globalization. This place had a big part in that. They were also going to different areas in the British Americas, you know, probably, uh, like I said before, Jamaica, Bermuda, can parts of Canada, uh, you know, especially the South in America. So 1715 is when this dock was built. The first wet dock in the world. So it's all of these interconnecting uh, areas. A hundred ships could fit in here. There's more on this side. This was probably one of the entrances that's no longer used, it doesn't look like, but these old ships, kind of like one. Oh, you can see over here. <laughs> right there. Those are the kind of ships that are coming in probably around the time. Um, 
a lot of this. Hey, look, shipping is still going on out there. Cargo ship, probably you know, headed to who knows where, China or something. A lot of this had a lot of economy was going on in uh, Liverpool. Slaves and many other things too. 1790, though, after the U.S. independence, so much trade was done in the city, the first ever foreign U.S. consulate was built in Liverpool because of all the trade happening between here and the uh, new United States. Back to the slave trade, though, by 1800. This is crazy. 40% of the world and of the world slave trade and 80% of Britain's slave trade came from Liverpool, from these docks. They went down to West Africa, over to the Americas and back again, the triangular trade. All the people that suffered through that, man, just, it's a crazy time in history, man. But there's no denying that it happened. At one point, in 1799 alone, 45,000 slaves from Africa to the Americas originated from Liverpool ships. 45,000 people, that's like a good-sized town, you know, city. One year alone. But not long after that, because of morality and different revolts, piracy and corruption involving with the slave trade, and especially in the Caribbean, and... Uh, it started, get, started to be frowned upon. 1807, the British slave trade was made illegal. Shut down. All that money, gone. Um, and by 1833, it was illegal in all of the British colonies. Unlike America, you know, that still had it uh, in Brazil and some other places for a lot longer. Still shipping things. Hopefully no slaves. <laughs> Suffering. Anyway. Um, however, some merchants from Liverpool were still involved secretly in this underground slave trade for decades after this illegal 1833. So the city's wealth already bolstered by the 1700s port here, and it grew rapidly into the 1800s. You know, a lot of these buildings you see, not, not those new ones, but these and some of these brick buildings definitely built around then. The Industrial Revolution began streamlining the economy, which started in this region. Industrial Revolution, factories and steam engines and different uh, coal, you know, coal, all this stuff that really is bad for the environment, but uh, created the world we have today and why everything exists as it does, kind of started in this region. Um, 1810, there was frequent transatlantic sh cargo ship and a passenger ship travel from Liverpool. Almost daily, there was ships going to the Americas. You know, people could go over, they were shipping products. Um, 1813, after the British East India Company opened, there was heavy trade coming from Liverpool all the way to the areas of Asia. You know, India, Malaysia, Singapore, different places like that. Uh, Hong, you know, Hong Kong. All these areas of Britain, Australia, you know, they were leaving from this dock. It was the biggest dock in the whole world. So 1830, another first, the first world's first intercity railway opened from here to Manchester. About an hour drive now, first ever, pretty amazing. 1840s to 1860s, saw many Irish immigrants coming in here to a lesser extent, but not that much less Welsh from Wales. Ireland were Irish were coming in, Welsh were coming in. At one point, 25% of uh, Liverpool was Irish, and uh, you know, 50 Welsh churches were built. Welsh language could be heard on the streets, and still, there's many Irish Catholic churches built. Huge, newer built, but a uh, cathedral over there. One interesting fact in the 1800s, uh, during the Civil War, Liverpool was one of the most, was the most pro-Confederate place in the world <laughs> because of their connections to the uh, cotton and slave trade. They actually built a few Confederate ships in these docks and sent them over to the Confederate Navy during the Civil War. <clears throat> uh, but rapid growth continued into the 1890s. Uh, 1890s, the first over overhead railway open here 
even before New York City and Chicago. We're, we're next. Getting into the 1900s, which takes us to the city we have today. It is home to two of England's, it was known as England's second city. Home to two famous football clubs, world famous, Liverpool and Everton. They became very popular. Um, let's get, go out to the sea, go to this last bit of history here. Unemployment though, shut, shuttered a lot of factories and hit the city hard beginning in the 1920s. World War II actually had uh, 80 air raids on Liverpool, which caused a lot of damage. A lot of things had to be rebuilt. The reason was because this was the United Kingdom Atlantic Control Center was here. They were uh, monitoring U-boat submarines that were off the docks and a bunch of cargo ships got sunk. The Lusitania, I, that was World War One, I, I think. Go, uh, got sunk right off the coast here. Anyways, these World War II air raids killed about 2,500 people in the city. Fun fact, all four of the Beatles members grew up in the city during the, in the 1940s during the war. war. What a uh, childhood. <laughs> that must have been terrifying, man. Having the planes coming over, bombs dropping all the time. It's 80 air raids. It's intense. So rebuilding happened after the war, uh, 1960s, youth, music, and poetry culture sprang up, the Beatles, you know, famously from the city, and uh, 70s and 80s, there was even sharper decline in the unemployment, shuttering of more factories, there were some riots, Liverpool football team became one of the best teams in the world during this time, and a shining light of pride for the city, and it's a uh, lowering economic world and also yeah, to a little bit lesser extent to its success Everton but they have some of the those are the two biggest sports fans in the world are from here man Liverpool is now the world's top team unbeaten in league this year the one the Champions League last year I love sports so I had to mention that um, and now it's uh you know they're building a lot of newer buildings and it's a bus bustling modern UK city up to this day, 2020, Liverpool history.